Welcome everyone. This is a presentation on Nuestra Historia Puentes, which is our middle school curriculum for the Our Story series of Spanish. So during this presentation, you're going to learn a lot about Puentes. You're going to see what students this series was made for, which is quite a variety as well. Um, you're going to see the organization of a typical unit. You'll see some of the key resources that we have some of my favorite resources, and some tips on how you can pace this curriculum depending on what your middle school program looks like. So first of all, the audience, it's a pretty wide audience. We've got whoever students from grades six to nine. So you can use this in a lot of different ways. You can use it as a middle school precursor. So if your high school already has Nuestra Historia and you wanna ease your students into that, you could use it to present the whole concept of CI and how this works. If you're already teaching or you have somebody teaching with Primaria and Nuestra Historia is used in the high school, you can bridge that with Puentes, hence the name Puentes. Um, and you can also use it as an alternative. So if you've got a middle school program where students are getting credit for Spanish one, um, you can use this instead of Nuestra Historia. They coincide well enough that your students would be able to go into level two after a year in Puentes. And this is working students through novice mid and novice high proficiency. A unit is organized starting out with four short stories and the short stories start with some vocab and some TPR, moves into some personal questions and answers or PQA. You've got your story asking that then le reads, leads into reading and some activities. After your short stories, you have two long stories that have activities that go along with them. You have your culture section that consists of three embedded readings and an expanded culture lesson. After that comes your extra extra section. It has interviews, it has the world in photos, some panoramas and some music. And you have your assessments, which are an IPA or integrated performance assessment and your test. So looking at the key resources that make up a unit, we start with our short stories. And these are designed to reinforce some target structures, usually around five target structures, and it does this through a context of a really fun story for students to read. You also get to explore culture through some realistic situations. And they're presented in two different ways. You have a slideshow if you want to read this as a whole group with your students, or you have a regular story page if you just want them to read that on their own as individuals. Breaking down a story, you start with your vocabulary page that presents the vocab with individual words and phrases. You work up to some sentences and brief interactions with your personal questions. And then after that, it comes your class story. You create it together and then students read it so that they're working themselves up to some sentence or some paragraph, sorry, and short text. After that is your story itself, which presents the um, vocabulary in longer text and some discourse. So there's like conversations going on in stories. Then you reinforce everything with your activities and then wrap it up with a short culture reading, which also is presented in paragraphs and short text. So it'd be easier for students to read that independently if you wanted them to. After the short stories come your long stories and these combine target structures of the short story. So you'll have two short stories and a long story. You can use those as a formative assessment to see how well students are doing with that vocabulary. You could make it a quiz if you wanted to, or it could just be a review. Looking at long stories, there's the story itself and then some activities. And then you also sometimes have a communicative activity like this one has a presentational speaking. There could be an interpretive reading, things like that to kind of take and give an extra context to what students are learning about. After you get your stories done, you've got your culture and your extra extra. So looking at the culture readings, these reuse the target structures from stories. So after you've worked through the stories, it'll be super easy for students to read these cultural readings. The embedded readings are written in scaffolded versions. So you start with version A that's really simple, and then you work up to version C, which is more difficult for students. It allows you to do differentiation. So if you have students that struggle more, they might stay on version A versus your more advanced students could work their way up to version C. And you could do this as a whole group or as individual reading, whatever works best for your class. In the extra extra section, your students are going to build some interpersonal skills and they're going to explore the target countries through images. So looking at that section in our culture, you've got your level readings, your embedded readings right here. So you've got three of those. Then you have an actual cultural lesson, which is an in-depth exploration of one topic. 
you get into the extra extra section where you are building interpersonal skills through um, interviews and activities that go along with those. You've got two different um, types of activities that are visual explorations of places and culture within that target country. And then you've got music so that you can go a little bit further with some songs and activities to go along with those. Then you wrap things up with your assessment. So you've got an integrated performance assessment, which starts out with a context. Then it takes you into an interpretive task, a per interpersonal task, and then builds to a presentational task where students take everything and put it together. If you want, you can also give a regular chapter test where you're working on vocabulary, reading, writing, and culture. So looking at those in the menu, you've got your IPA, starts out with the context, and works through a realistic situation through interpretive, interpersonal, and presentational activities. And then you've got your traditional test, which just tests students on their basic skills and their understandings that they picked up throughout the, the chapter, the unit, sorry. So some of my favorite resources, um, I really love this story, Los Héroes del Avión. Um, it's about the Nazca Lions in Peru. The story is really fun to read. And I just love the illustrations they have. They're just so lively and just so, so much action. So I just love this story. It's a really fun thing to work through. Um, I love pretty much all of the Cultura Breve. They're just, I just love them. I think they're great. But one of my favorites is Paseo Bandera, just because it's so simple to read. This is really early in the curriculum. I don't remember exactly which unit, but it's very early. Um, so many cognates, but it tells a lot of information. And then the pictures are really great too. So I think that they just really capture students' attention with all of that lively color. Another one that I really love is Baby Las Importantes. Um, just because of, I find that students really come alive when you start talking about foods and drinks and stuff like that. So this is like really interesting for students to see like what goes into these drinks, when do they use them? And it just really opens up a lot of interesting conversations that you can have. My favorite long story is called Las Excusas. And the reason that I love this one is because it starts out with the story itself. And then you get to a certain point in the story and then students get to cho choose, sorry, how they want the story to end. So there are two possible endings. You can have students choose it by themselves. Like, hey, you choose the one that works for you. Or you could have students vote on it and have like one ending for the entire class. But it's just a great way to get students even more involved in the story. It's like a choose your own adventure. How are we going to have this story end for us? Um, and my favorite cultural reading is Chivito y Mate. Um, again, like I mentioned, students love to talk about food. So this is just, it's got great pictures, great conversation for like, would you even want to try this? What do you think looks good about it? Things like that. It's a great way to get your students drawn in. And from my extras, extra sections, I really love the entrevistas, the, um, the videos where students are being interviewed. So you're going to have students looking at students talk about themselves. Most of them are from Mexico, um, but they're going to talk about themselves. And then as some information is presented, a question will pop up. And these interactive video activities are just so fun for students to work through because it's in the moment they hear something, a question pops up so that they can recall it very easily. And then after you've worked through the video, you've got an activity for each one of five conversations where the students are given a question to work through, a stem for answering that question, and then a list of cognates to help them talk. So it's a great way to tell your students, all right, you just sat down, you listened through a video, let's get up, let's talk to each other. So it really helps to build some of that community in the classroom. And then another of my favorite extras is the music. Um, so every chapter has a little music section where it identifies at least one song, sometimes a lot more than one song, and gives you some activities to work through that song with your students. It always ties into either the theme or the vocabulary of the unit. And it's just a really great way to bring in extra culture and extra practice of vocabulary. So pacing this could go a lot of different ways. And here are just some examples. So if you're just teaching a one-year program, like, um, because your eighth graders or something are getting the credit for Spanish one, you could use Puentes as an alternative. So you're gonna spend some less time on the class stories, but you're gonna go into the Astoria dust, the, the short stories right away. Um, you'll probably get through units seven or eight out of nine units total. And then once you do that, they should be able to get into second year Spanish. If you wanted to break it up over two years, like grade seven and eight, you're gonna use most of the resources 
Um, when you're using the embedded readings, you'll probably use the middle versions or the, um, in seventh grade and then work them up to the longer versions in eighth grade. And you'll do four or five units per year. And you could also throw in like a reader or something like that. If you wanna divide it up even further, you could do three years over grade six through eight. And in this case, you're going to use everything in the curriculum, milk it for as much as it's worth. Um, start out with like shorter versions of readings in grade six, up to the more complicated things in grade eight. And you'll get through about three units per year. So this would mean like you're not seeing your students very often or um, your classes are pretty short, something like that, so that you're dividing it up. And um, we actually have a pacing guide online as well, but I'm gonna drop that link in the chat in just a second. All right, so if you want to check that out, there is the pacing guide for Fuentes. So I think I just sent it as a direct message. There you go. All right, so that is Fuentes. So if you have any questions, please feel free to fill out our daily survey and I will put that link in the chat as well. All right, so there's your daily survey. Um, we're gonna be having our Q&A at one o'clock today. If you have specific questions that you'd like to just reach out to me, you can email me at melissaf at bosesigil.com. If it's a more general about Bosays itself, you could email us at info at bosesigil.com. That is a way, great way for you to sign up for a walkthrough as well. And if you're curious about just CI in general, I would definitely recommend that you explore the hub because it's got so many resources, activities, things that you can do to start introducing CI into your classroom. So thank you so much for coming to this presentation. I hope that you enjoy teaching with Puentes this year.